Welcome to Between Two Pastries, a not-so-typical nutrition podcast. Nicole and Annie are licensed and registered dietitians. Join them as they discuss hot nutrition topics, challenge popular beliefs, and have a blast doing it. Here are your hosts, Nicole and Annie. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Welcome to Between Two Pastries. This is Nicole. Hey, everyone. It's Annie. So Annie and I are kind of in the super chill mode because we both have had these um, like super busy last few days and kind of wonky schedules and whatnot. So we're just kind of like, here we are. (laughs) Here we are. And we're back to like, we're back to like our roots of just venting. And so like we've spent, yeah, we've spent the last 15 minutes just like chilling out, venting. And Nicole's like, we should just hit. Like, why are we not recording? Yeah. So this can, this yeah, this this could go a lot of different ways. <laughs> we we have a little bit of a hodgepodge pod. Yeah, hodgepodge pod. Hodgepodge pod. Come on, yep. let's let's say that three times together. Right. Hodgepodge pod. Pod. Hodgepodge. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Game over. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I want to tell you the story. Yeah. Oh, I would totally. Let like me tell you the story. So this last weekend, and I want to know your opinion on this. Um, I was told that. You know, it, it wasn't someone who follows intermittent fasting yeah. or whatever, but he was speaking to the fact intermittent fasting, you know, it's just, that's so healthy to do every so often because it gives your digestive system a break. And I said, but isn't that what sleeping at night is for? Correct. And then the PhD sitting next to me just looks at me and he's like, uh, yeah. Well, but then there's physiology a, and everything. There's so much belief. There's so many different <clears throat> beliefs in there that aren't actually accurate. It's like somebody decides to think something about something, whether they have a little bit of proof based off of one or two people that they studied, right? And then they make it a truth. And then right. Right. You know, people latch onto that, and then you know, it's like the the game of telephone, right? Right. Right. <laughs> it's just, it's just so fascinating because when I said, but that's what sleeping at night is for, yeah. it was like, you should know, like, that doesn't give your GI a break. <laughs> and I'm like, are you sleeping for two hours? Like what, what do you mean? It doesn't give your GI a break. If you stop eating at 7 PM, let's say, and you eat again at seven, that's 12 hours. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't about to get into it this whole thought out is the next day another girl had commented that twisting like when you're doing for example different exercises or yoga twisting helps digestion yeah okay so it's not necessarily wrong right like we know twisting is going to move things but here's the accurate way and like this is why words matter fiber is what causes digestion to occur. Fiber helps digestion. Mm -hmm. Twisting is a motion you help things along, Mm -hmm. facilitate some movement within your GI tract. It is not going to help digestion, cause digestion. It's not the, do you know what I mean? It's, and again, she said a very, you know, just out out there. It wasn't anything like in a, a point she was trying to make. It was just someone hears that and now, instead of perhaps incorporating fiber and now that, okay, well, I should do this and I need these exercises. And so I get this twisting. And again, this is a very kind of silly example, but sure. this is why words matter. You're going to go around and say that intermittent fasting is going to reset your digestive tract. What the fuck does that even mean? Your body doesn't want to be reset. Your body does yes. not want to be reset. Yes. It doesn't need to. Yeah. And what's really fascinating is because this guy kept arguing with me as the PhD sitting next to me, he's like, I'm just going to tell you the study that I ran where we analyzed all the animals that have the exact same digestive tract as a human and the animals that don't. And we found out that actually, you know, this whole, we come from people who don't know where their next meal is going to be from kind of theory, which is where this whole, you know, IF arises from like, that we actually are not meant to eat that way, that our digestive tract is not like that. We are actually more closely related than, for example, 
the tiger or the lion who can eat every five days, for example. Exactly. And it was fascinating because this, you know, it, it was the conversation at that point just basically kind of stalled and ended, which was good, but it was just like, it, you can't change people's view. But what I struggle most with, why do you ask for my opinion or advice if you're going to then turn around and be like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I do find that curious okay. too, because yeah. that does happen. It totally happens. Yeah. People pay money to us to do that. <laughs> I know. It's, it's just, true it's though. Just, it's very interesting and frustrating at the same time. And yet, you know, it's conversations with other people in the same, you know, group that I was with this last weekend, there were some that were very holistic and sure. And kind of like over here, out there types sure. of things. However, very open to like, hearing different, you know, like very sure. non-judgmental. So it was like, you could have a conversation yeah. versus, you know, versus this like argumentative place that, that people yeah. are coming from. And, you know, I guess I've gotten to the point where I start saying like, I work with eating disorder, you yeah. know, like you, it's like, I have to like go in with that before oh, I, I say like, it's okay to eat mac and cheese or what, you know what I mean? Like I have to yeah. lead with that because it's so like, I think people are just yeah. Because, you know, you don't have all of these crazy beliefs. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating just how many of these beliefs really lead people's lives. And they don't even know that the beliefs that they have are so incredibly disordered. Completely. They have no idea that, would you say over 50% of them eat three disordered way? And oh. that that is actually normalized and they don't even know that that is totally wackadoodly. I think that's, that is precisely what that is. And a point I just want to bring back to this whole concept of like not eating for so long is that the issue that I hear with that when we work with individuals who choose anorexia as their eating disorder, right? So either they're not eating for long periods of time or when they do eat, they, so even when they do eat, they have like a bite of something or two bites of something and then they don't eat again for like another whatever. What we find, and Annie, you know this, which is why none of mm -hmm. this other stuff makes any sense. What we find is they have more GI disorder, more Correct. gastrointestinal disorder and stress from not eating, from not mm -hmm. having enough coming in to create motility, to continue um, the normal functioning that is required from our body than, than anything else. So this whole concept of our digestive system needs a break is absolute BS in, in that right. respect. The right. other piece that we find too, um, Annie, as you know, is that individuals with that eating disorder have tendencies of, of saying they're eating, but consuming huge volumes of fiber. Right. Right. Or fibrous foods, right? Fibrous. Yep. So, I mean, you know, fiber, fiber in general is amazing for us, but it, it but it, it doesn't provide us with any energy and it can actually work against us when we have an imbalance of the amount that we're taking in. So again, right. <laughs> you've got two concepts here of disordered eating and, and anorexia where you have, you know, an imbalance of food over here that creates GI issues. And then you have limited to no food coming in for long periods of time that will equally over time create GI. And this is where we get into then, oh, I can't tolerate anything. Well, yeah, because your body is not being exposed to anything anymore. It's, it's, it's stopped producing enzymes. It's got to like like it's got to like rebuild the capability to produce. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's like the water, the well ran dry, right? Your right, body doesn't right, produce right. enzymes when there's nothing there to, to break down. 
Right. There's nothing. There's nothing there to break down. Right. So because you again, ex- you can't expect because it it does it every day. It does what it's supposed to, to do, do every, every day. day. So again, you're not fueling it. Guess what? Another system is going to shut down. Right. This is how and this, this is why works. Ugh. Right. This is why you see when people follow something like follow something like keto or paleo or whatever, some weird mumbo jumbo we diet yeah whatever it might be they're eliminating something right um or a period of time whatever this is why you see kidneys issues yes you see gallbladder surgeries well, it, it, you see diabetes oh for heaven's sake and and um the, the catalyst i was thinking like the gallstones and the you yeah. know no i've seen full-blown gallbladder surgery typically i mean let's let's call a spade a sp- spade gallbladder removal is generally caused in or like that job are struggling with some form of overweight inactivity yes. poor eating right i mean that's that's the general population that yeah is going to have gallbladder surgery or removal and guess what it, if you talk to these people they've spent 20 25 years yo-yo dieting 100 percent. now i'm not the inactive that this can't be random or blah 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 right like not sitting here with a study in front of me all i can say is dieting can cause some serious issues and massive issue when you believe the the marketing that's not it's you're just not gonna make it science it's not yeah it it, it, oh my gosh i i can't yeah it it, it's it's crazy um the but even if you're again, I don't even know why we're even focusing on, on weight in general. It's like, Oh, well, yeah. Yes. You have mass on your body. You have mass on your body. Some people have more mass than others again, because of their genetic disposition or, you know, for other things, whatever bottom Mm -hmm. line though, is it's like, you will strain your body more by trying to manipulate the mass on your body than just let your body be your body and just take care of it. And, right. you know, if your body is going to change because you're taking care of it, then it's changing for where it feels comfortable. So whether that's up or whether that's down, it's going to go where it wants to go when you take care of it. <laughs> right, and it's right, not going right. to do it in this forced, crazy <clears throat> 10 pound a week law. You know what I'm no, saying? No, I mean, like, that, I've, uh, God, hasn't that ship sailed already? You know, whatever, whatever. Right, well, but, I mean, again, there's so many avenues we could go is. down that we probably already have spoken about at some point in time again. But sometimes I feel like we've got to revisit some of this, these conversations. No, we do. We do. Because it's, I mean, it's therapeutic in a way for us to get it out and vent about it. And, you know, what are your thoughts on keto? And I said, keto is meant for people with epilepsy. Beyond that, if it's not a hospital prescribed diet and you have a hospital diagnosis, like, no, don't do it. This person's mind was not blown. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Where it was just like, no, that's no, but like, we need to, but like, it's good for the body. Like according to, to who? Yeah. Yeah. Where, this is all yeah. I'm sitting right. next to with, as these questions right. are coming up, I'm sitting next to a PhD in health and right. he's like, are people crazy? Like he whispers to me, like, this is crazy. And I'm like, like yeah, well, this yeah. is my life. This yeah. is my life. It is. It is our lives. You know, and the thing is, it's, it's interesting. Cause I feel like if he, if he's not on media or if he's not you know, whatever that is, he's not going to be seeing some of this stuff. If he doesn't do what we do, he's certainly not going to be seeing some of this stuff. But there, the, right. that's the thing. There's so much crazy false information that's out there. And it's... Especially in your crazy athletic health communities, right? right. You've got yeah. different places in California, Colorado. You could, you could argue, um, you know, Arizona and you know, like different places where you've got communities, pockets of areas where 
these people have so much wealth that they right. can put so much time into diet and exercise yeah. that you they don't even realize that where some obesity exists, mm-hmm. there's no grocery stores. Talking with another person this weekend who, uh, you know, again, asked about my beliefs around food and blah, blah, blah. So I tell the whole spiel. And this person says, well, my partner is in residency. Okay. And is it, this is what I thought was really interesting. Has spent the last two years. So a native American reservation. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Partner comes back, finishes residency and says there, no one can help these people. Oh, wow. It's my experience with reservations and native American tribal communities you know oh obesity obesity and trying to help them with obesity. right 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 like you don't help obesity okay right. this is this is this is our society's number one problem is we're continuing to try to help obesity instead of all the catalysts involved like i don't know poverty yeah acts right 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 how about those things yeah how yeah. about that because if we don't address those things yeah we're going to continue to see obesity. Of course we are. And guess what? I probably, you know what, if I don't have any money and I'm living paycheck to paycheck, I'm not going to go be like, Oh, I have to go buy all my fruits and vegetables. So it was really, really hard to hear. Like this guy spent whatever type of (laughs) medicine he's planning to practice, whatever, or she, um, that these people can't be helped. Yeah. You didn't understand. You you have not made the connection then. No. Nope. You you don't get it. You still think it's about food. Yes, exactly. You still think it's about food cuz guess what it's not. Right. It's not. And the other point like we were talking, you can't change people's cultures. No. You go down to the north side of Milwaukee and try to talk to Afri- African American moms about juice in their bottles, they're not going to stop that. You go to the South side and try to talk about lard and how, you know, well, lard health causes blah, 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 blah. They're not going to stop using lard in their well, refried beans. The other piece is that you can't tell someone that their culture is wrong. Correct. I mean, right. that alone is but like, that's what, that's what our culture is doing. That's so what the U S right. That's what diet culture is doing is like, we need to change your culture. You shouldn't eat these things. Like, how about we understand the culture that exists yes. here. Why are these people even on reservations? Has anyone asked that question? <laughs> right. Let, I'm pretty sure we didn't all learn about that in school. So, right. but you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, we can't keep approaching this as a food issue or an yeah. obesity issue. Totally agree with you. So that it was just, it's just really eye opening, just how much people are just so hyper-focused on uh, these highly disordered beliefs um, maybe a little less on body, but more so on food, you know, it was yeah. for this, you know, it just, it was really well, fascinating. And, and, and we were, we were talking earlier too, just about this whole concept of, again, that healthy piece again, right. Mm-hmm. Or, or it, like going more towards like the orthorexia type of a concept yes. or this, this idea that everything has to be super pure or that whole concept of clean, which is stupid. Um, I don't get it. No, I, I, it's like, uh, you guys, so so, those, those very, that very language and that, that very narrow way of trying to operate in a world that, that we don't need to number one, we don't need to, we don't need to, I think that's the whole bottom line. Can we let go of a stress from somewhere? Can we let go of, of whatever this is and whatever, however that defines you with, right? Right. Right. Because Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the only reason why people are doing certain things. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's like a status thing or it defines them as something or they feel better about themselves, you know, when they're like, I only do this. I am only, why? You don't have to, your body's definitely not asking you to. It's creating a ton of stress in your life and your personal life. Why? 
Right, 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 right. If it, if, if whatever, if, if whatever way of eating you're doing, you enjoy, that's wonderful. But here's the deal. If you can't do that way of eating and, and it causes anxiety to have to go places or, or even like, and I'm not even talking like vegetarian or vegan or, you know, what I could even throw gluten-free in there because there's so many options available to people at this point. But like when you're doing extreme things and restricting gluten and chooses not to, like even those types of situations, if you can't go and enjoy a piece of birthday cake somewhere, or you can't go and enjoy Christmas dinner, or you have to eat only vegetables because of whatever belief system you've created in your brain, that is a way to live. And you don't have to just to simply shrink yourself, right? Like just to take up less space. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure it's worth it. Or just to, to not feel some level of shame. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that it goes so much more beyond that. Um, On a personal note, when I go to a place where let's say there's 10 people and I'm one of those 10 people and majority eight out of 10 are following some sort of a whatever glorified, right. You know, vegan, you know, like all of these whole food things, whatever the amount of shame I feel for how, I cook or eat or whatever it might be in, in any given moment is it's like immense. Really? Still yes. now? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just, mm. just is God. And so if I feel that way, I can't imagine how others feel oh, totally. when they bust out their candy bar during a run and someone else next to them has whatever beans or I don't know. <laughs> you know or, no, I or know. An, just something now. Yes. You totally. Want, you want to eat the cake. And this person over here is like, I don't need to. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. And I'm that, talking that, about people who follow diets that they don't yes. need to be following them. Correct. And Correct. that's where it's Correct. like, God, I feel so shameful because I, I preach totally the opposite. And, and I want you to see that. And Oh, so, like, and, and so I just can't imagine how that must feel and why so many people give into, yeah, I like should probably social, do this. The correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I need to sort join. Like I need to drink the cooler. Pressure. Well, it, right. Or I'm second guessing my own. So then that, then it becomes that correct. second guessing their own choices, second guessing, um, <laughs> you know, whether they, uh, then it's like, then they're actually thinking about something they may have just been intuitively choosing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the judgment starts. Right. They start to question you or I. Right. Versus I'm here in this moment. This is what I feel like doing right now. I'm going to do it when I'm done doing it. I've, have already forgotten that that is what I chose to do. And I'm moving on with my life. Instead, it becomes this whole psychology session with the self, right? Correct. Whoa, maybe we shouldn't be doing that. Is there a reason why we shouldn't be doing that? I don't know. I mean, they Mm -hmm. seem like they know what they're doing. Do we know what we're doing? I mean, maybe I should be doing that because maybe I don't have my stuff together like I thought I did. You know, maybe I don't deserve to do X, Y. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. You can totally get down a rabbit hole with with yourself just because. Oh, yeah. You wanted a piece of cake and somebody else is, you know, bringing their RX bar as their dessert. Correct. Oh, my. (laughs) But you say that in tongue in cheek. And I've seen that. Like, I've seen that beyond someone with an eating disorder and the RX bar is like really like, you know what I mean? Like, I have seen that happen. I know. And I cannot understand why we have to live in a place where that happens. Agreed. I just, I cannot understand why we can't just well, but the celebrate. Thing, I know. Our country is really messed up around a lot of things. You go to, yeah. to <laughs> any, most any other country and it's just not like that. There's no shame around it. You know, right. It, it, right. It, it's just different, you know, right. and yes, 
Europe has a very high volume of, of eating disorders. Yes. Oh, we yes, know that yeah. we know, we've but, been told. I, but what I'm saying though, <laughs> is that you go to these different, you know, these different countries and, and you, you just see things very differently. You see people enjoying right. and doing their life very differently. Right. And sometimes even, you know, living without a lot of the comforts that we have here in the state and Mm -hmm. obviously being far more happy with their lives in general. And people Mm -hmm. always ask about what's healthy. And I think healthy starts in your head. Healthy starts in your heart. Healthy Mm -hmm. starts in your personal behavior, your choices, not in what you choose to eat, how you choose to treat yourself, how you choose to treat others. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, I, That's where healthy I completely starts. get it. Do you wake right. up and are you happy and grateful to be alive? Are you, right. you don't, do you know what I mean? Healthy That's is where, not food and exercise. No, <laughs> you know, it, it, those are the, the things that, that, you know, that your, your cells are, you know, living off of, if you will, a lot more so I feel. Right. I mean, obviously let's, let's be real, you know, nutrition is important, but I don't think people realize that it's important and people can be very healthy and eat a very varied diet and be more than okay. (laughs) Right. Right. Because that's the way it is. (laughs) Right. Well, Uh, I I mean, we've, I think we've talked about this before, but like, you see someone post online like, yay, I made a gluten-free chocolate cake. Well, Why, you know, do you unless see they're celiac, like people, but, yeah, that, but, well, even, but if, even, even that, even it's still, like a big deal. Even still, yeah. even still, we don't need to all know your diet. We all well, don't I, need to know your, your syndromes and disorders and I all agree. the things. I agree. Just say you made a cake. Agree. Today yeah. I made a fry. I don't care if chicken's in it, tofu's in it, corn's in it. I don't give a shit. You right. just made a stir fry. Today I made, you know, <laughs> right. a baked potato. Cool. Right. I, I don't give a shit what's on it. I know. I know. Today I ate pasta. Okay. And in my brain, I'm probably thinking, I I picture something with red sauce. Sure. Or Alfredo. Someone else might picture it being this way or that way. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. Just say, just you know, whatever about yeah. it. why why does food have to be so locked into so much judgment? Or so much qualifiers. There's so much. Yeah, I got to say that it was fat-free, sugar-free cake. I got to say that it was gluten-free, dairy-free cake. Just say you fucking made a cake, man. Like, no one cares. And when someone (laughs) says, and someone says in the comments, like, hey, that looks so good. What's the recipe? Now say, hey, you know what? It's really interesting. Decided to try something new. Or my child is, you know, lactose intolerant or has celiac. So I actually made this gluten-free cake and whatever. And so this is the flour I used, but to substitute, you can use blah, 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 blah. Totally. There's, there's an appropriate place to say what type of ingredients. And now people start making cake gluten, but like they don't, you don't need to. Right, 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 right. And again, this goes to this, this weird thinking, and I guess we're picking on gluten now. No gluten equals healthy. Right, 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 right. And what, Which, right. Gluten, again, I just want to clarify, gluten's a protein. Mm-hmm. It allows for flexibility or elasticity mm-hmm. within, let's call it dough. Yeah. Within food. You know, and I, I am going to make a so, comment of this. Um, Christy Harrison, um, who we've had on the show, who is the author of the anti-diet. She's actually, she is coming out with a new book too. It's still in the editing um, uh, stages right now. However, one of her um, recent podcasts, and I feel like I, I want to add the, the, um, the link to that podcast in this note, in our podcast notes, only because she specifically brought up and she does a tremendous amount of deep, deep research. Oh yeah. And yes. this one is, was, is just worth it. She kind of, she, she hits on a few different things um, in this particular um, it's a shorter podcast than her usual stuff. Cause she's on maternity leave right now. However, um, 
she did touch on a whole bunch of research around how, um, which we all knew anyway, and she mm-hmm. did too, but her big thing is, is debunking this whole food sensitivity crap. Oh, um, it's that, so awful. That drives her, you know, up a wall, which it drives most of us up a wall, oh, yeah. but she specifically yep. unveiled all of this particular research. And the sum of it was that gluten is actually not the problem. We know no, that we know. we know that, but, but what I'm saying is that, it, yeah. you know, she was trying to make up a, a point where it's like, you guys, the research after research, after research, after, and what we're talking about is real research. We're not talking about no. research that supports somebody's livelihood to get you to, to buy and believe in a system that makes them wealthy. Right. This isn't what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about the real no. deal here. Now, again, if you're celiac, right. yeah, that's going to be an issue. D- right. But when that's you're an not, disease. it really isn't. And the thing is, it still comes down to there's an underlying other issue going on. And chances are it's disordered eating. It's your own behavior that's right. creating your panicky food intolerances. Correct. It's anxiety. I continue to say that to everyone. Ooh. When you think you can't, you get a tummy ache after eating something, you have anxiety. Right. Like, I mean, nine times though, you're so incredibly unsure of what you're doing by eating X food. Right. You know, like you have that much insecurity around it. Your your belly's going to hurt, period. Well, again, it's, it's, we have to blame everything on an external thing. Right. Oh, of course. Everything is external. This is the problem. That's a problem. All the other things around me are a problem, including what I eat. Right. Well, let's go back to the main. I mean, it's probably not the main, but one of the main reasons behind why the gluten-free craze happened was wheat belly. I mean, we know that. Oh my gosh. When but that he, book came out. Right. But then he had to apologize because his book was for crap, basically, is what happened. And well, I yeah, sat I mean, with there, a physician in our area, in unfortunately. Book. No, there was not. And he put down dietitians. He was incredibly um, unprofessional. Um, oh, he was, I sat in a meeting with him and I about... I about lost my job. Oh, I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bet. So a v- group of dietitians that were really, we were really like, you can't, this is not accurate. This it's is not, not what the research said. This is not, it's not your book is it. not true. That's you correct. cannot tell our and your patients. This, this correct. is the be all end all. Correct. And he said <clears throat> in the meeting, he was, they'll need to have their own chef and no gluten and blah, blah, blah. And, like this is no, like this is not okay. We're not going to prescribe this to people. Yeah. Well, some people just, you know, and and my my argument was people can't afford to have a chef. Like, are you kidding? We're oh, we're, I know. We're Come like close near inner city Milwaukee. Like, are you serious? Right, right. And we all do well, not lucky have to, enough. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, like he was like some people have to be left behind. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was awful. It was like one of the worst. And I was just horrified by it. So basically, so it, n- not everybody wants, can have a good life because correct. Unless that's you're, just the way it is. Oh, for you, heaven's you sake. don't deserve. You don't. De- mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Unle- unless you're it was making, awful. unless you're making his salary, you mm-hmm. just don't deserve He's got a chef. to be yeah, healthy. He a chef. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have a real problem with this one. Oh, I know. So point being, you know, this stuff is, it's been around 50s, 60s, 70s. Oh, now I we're know. Moving on I, know. 80s. I know. None of this has worked. None Ever. of it. Ever. None Ever. of it. Ever. Ever. You know, even, even, you know, I'm vegan for the most part. And I say that I do use that term loosely because I can actually eat fish now and I'm elated. Um, But, you know, I have, I had a bunch of legit food allergies that I'll be honest, like legit food allergies. So it has limited, but I have also pushed my own envelope because um, being that I know what I know because of my work, um, I know how to do that. And so I, I was able to get over a lot of my food allergies, which is really nice. I still can't do chicken though, um, or beef or, you know, what have you. So anyway, for the most part, I consume, you know, vegetarian. Um, but my point is that even when people follow, say, if they decide they want to go vegan or what have you, 
the, the percentage is so high of the people who decide to bring meat mm -hmm. and other, you know, products back into their diet because of how lousy they feel. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're tired all the time. Yeah. You're pale. I, You're if you don't deficient. know how to do it right, it's going to be, it can be super challenging again. Right. I feel lucky because of my knowledge. So, you know, when I had right. to go through that stage of really doing that and trying to get all my things in, you know what I'm saying? I could do it, but I would tell even my clients who would ask, I said, you know what, if I could eat meat, I would, because I'll tell you, it would make my life easier. a whole lot easier. You right. know what I mean? So what's really interesting that you bring this up, you think about this, like when, when people choose, to, let's take out ethics or not you know like i'm not yeah, saying, no i understand you know, that whatever. i don't want to pick like, on whatever. any of that no. yes of when, course. When, when people are doing this basically out of status or some sort Correct. of trying trying to eliminate things or whatever be like others i don't know they you talk about how like you, you start feeling tired you're pale you're iron deficient that's how they were before yep because they were following this diet Yep. And that's how they probably felt before, like feeling right, because they still aren't that eating way. balanced. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They might be eating enough, but they're not actually eating what they the right. Need. Yes, exactly. And this is why nutrition is so personal. And you guys, not all. Con oh. So right. this whole thing about like, you know, oh, you know, there's so many marketing things out there now. I was just having a conversation with a, another practitioner um, about like all of this, like, you know, group nutrition stuff. And it's like, you guys, you, you can't, you, you can't nope. because everybody is so flipping personalized. You mm -hmm. can't just be like, okay, here's four ideal things that you do. Well, guess what? You know, mm -hmm. those four ideal things, whatever that even means remotely, right? aren't going to work for, for Jane and Bill and William, or, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like it, it's right. like, because there's this, that, and the other thing that's going on with them. So Correct. their ideal for things is going to be very different. You cannot group people together and have a nutrition session. You cannot do that. I don't know how to keep saying no. that. Here's the other. I, it's sorry. It just drives me no. nuts. It drives no. me nuts. No, I, I totally get it. But here's the problem. Here, here's the argument that I think we're going to start hearing. Well, if you say nutrition is individualized, then the IF is working for me. Well, because that's it, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's my. Sure, sure. And, and you know, do you see what I mean? Like, how do you argue I that? Do. that? Because yeah. that's just bullshit. Well, in and, and, and it could be. I also would it would have a lot more questions for that individual. Right. Well, yeah. What do right. what do you define as working? Meaning, mm -hmm. what were you doing before? Mm -hmm. Like people, mm -hmm. people latch on to the term of a diet because they feel that they so need structure. And again, they still want to depend on something outside of themselves. Right. There's just but if how you want to eat problem. is by eliminating everything. Oh my there's gosh. Something there's something. Wrong. Yes. There's something else wrong. There's definitely something. But else again, wrong. I circle all the way back to the beginning where we have normalized orthorexic tendencies and disordered eating. Right. And, and all of a sudden now that becomes wellness. <gasps> oh yeah. That's wellness. This is freaking mind blowing. So here's the deal. Um, <laughs> Christy's next book, which I'm not trying to promote, but I just, um, we I, get excited about her. Well, stuff. I very much respect her work because it's so intense and she just mm -hmm. does a dang good job. But I think the title of her next book is called The Wellness Trap. And um, again, mm -hmm. I just love it because she's finally exploiting what we all know, you know what I mean? What mm -hmm. you and I and, and other professionals in our field already know. So I'm excited to see what she's able to actually, you know, bring to the general public as more eye-opening things of again, you guys, it's, it's literally all about somebody else making money. So. Well, oh uh. God, it's so funny you say that though. Cause Nicole, like, I find it so fascinating that like, I don't know, a 40 year old woman or a 60 year old dude or a 30 something, whatever 
puts more stock into a 15 year old influencer in a, Oh my gosh, hands down making a smoothie than like you or me or Christy, you know, that I don't get such that. An interesting point. It's such an interesting point. Like seriously, like truly believes like a little teeny bopper, like who looks good making a smoothie. Right. Who has zero education. Right. And or... knows how to use Photoshop. Right. Right. It is so <laughs> it's most likely. I mean, really? Yeah. But it's, it, it's it is really, really fascinating. fascinating that that literally with no no credentials, people just believe that stuff. And, and I just say that because with Chris, it made me think Christy's coming out with this big book. Sure. And there's going to be people. No, none of that. Reason. And right. the thing is about like this book for Christy, gosh, I'm trying to think of when her last book came out, but she started her second book almost right away. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's taken her years of research. Oh yeah. Years yeah. is my point. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Oh, it is. It's so real. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, whatever. Anyway. Dude. Hopefully you learned something or just enjoyed us venting about it. All <laughs> right, everybody. <laughs> Well, we love to hear your comments, feedback, anything else you wish to share with us. We love hearing from you all. So um, sweet. Have a great day. Bye. (laughs) Have questions you want to hear discussed on the show? Find us on Facebook or visit betweentwopastries.com and drop us a line. Want to support the show? Find us on Patreon for exclusive content. If you love the show, find us on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. Hit the subscribe button and leave us a review.